Greetings, Python coders. Once again, this is Alan D. Moore, and this is part two of my series on Python classes. In the last part, I dispelled some common myths about Python classes, and hopefully got you in a frame of mind for wanting to learn a little bit more about how to use this feature of Python and um, to make it part of your programming. In this video, we're actually going to build a class. We're going to talk about the syntax. We're going to talk about some of the concepts and the vocabulary behind classes. And we're going to learn some of the conventions that we observe in Python around building classes. So let's just dive right in uh, and start building a class. The first thing we need to do is just type the word class. And then we type in a name for our class. Now we're going to be building a point class, which will represent a two-dimensional point on a plane. So we'll just call that point. Notice I capitalize the class name. In Python, we have a convention that class names should use the cap words case or Pascal case so that every word is just smashed together without any spaces and the first letter of each word is capitalized. Not to be confused with camel case where the first letter would be lowercase and then every subsequent word would be capitalized. All the words are capitalized in cap words. Again, that's not required. That's not syntax. That's just a convention. Alright, so after we have given our class a name, we add a colon. Just like when we define a function, or start in a, a loop, or an if statement. And so after the colon, that starts an indented block. And everything inside this indented block is going to be the definition of our class. And for now, I'm just going to put pass, and we're going to leave that an empty block. Now, in creating a class, I have not created an object. What I have created is the blueprint for creating an object. To actually create objects of class point, I need to call point as if it were a function. Okay, so this is a class. If I want an actual point, I call it with these parentheses. So this P1 here is an object. And we would say this object is an instance of class point. So remember that term instance as opposed to class. That's an important concept that's going to come into play as we move on. The instance is the thing you actually make. The class is the blueprints for creating it. All right. So our class doesn't do a whole lot right now. Um, it's just an empty class. But we can start building functionality into this class. But before we do that, let's, uh, let's do something important. Let's add some documentation. So our point, let's see, represents a point in two-dimensional space. So this triple quoted string right under the class line is what we call a doc string. And something you should add to every class, just a short description of what the class is and why it exists. And that's useful in Python because if we use the help function, you can see that Python actually generates some nice documentation for us about this class. All right, so always remember to add this doc string. You don't have to assign it to any variables. You just put a triple quoted string right here under the class line. But now let's make our class actually do something. So classes can have something called attributes. Let's call this default x and we'll assign it to 0 
and we'll create a default y and add that to zero. An attribute is nothing more than a variable that's attached to a class. So now if I want to access p1.defaultx, you can see that that's zero. Default y, also zero. Okay, so p1 has the attribute default x and default y. All right, point also has default x and a default y. So these attributes are what we call class attributes. They are attached to the class or the blueprint. Objects can also have something called instance attributes. So if we set p1.x equal to 1 and p1.y equal to 25, these are called instance attributes. We can see that that's 1 and that's 25. Instance attributes belong to the actual object itself. They're attached to the instance, but they're not attached to the class. If I say point.x, we get an attribute error because the class doesn't have this attribute x, only the instance. So it would be really tedious if every time that we created an object of a class, we had to manually assign all of its instance variables. It would kind of defeat the purpose of having a class. So in order to assign those in an instance, we can create what's called a method. A method is just a function that's assigned to a class. And just like creating a regular function, we use the def keyword. Uh, let's call this set coords x and y. Now, we need to ask, how do I set these instance variables on the instance inside this class definition? Because I don't have p1 up here, right? p1 doesn't exist yet because it, it doesn't get created until after the point class. Well, by default, when you create a method in a class, it is what we call an instance method. And that means that it gets access to the instance or a reference to the instance of the class. And that is passed in as the first argument to the, the method. So we'll add that here, the actual instance. Okay, now we can say the actual oops, instance dot x equals x, the actual instance dot y equals y. Okay, and now instead of that, we can say p1 dot set coords. Now, when I call this instance method, I don't pass in this first argument. This first argument is implicitly passed in by the fact that I'm calling this method on an instance of the class. So all I pass in is x and y. All right, let's see, p1.x, p1.y. And you can see that worked. So now I've got two instance variables or instance attributes, x and y, that were created by this instance method. Now I can't call set coordinates on point. If I try to do that, I get an error that it's missing a, a required argument, right? Because this method takes three arguments, the first one being the instance, then an x and a y. When I call this on point, it isn't an instance of the class. It's not going to pass in that first argument implicitly. And since I don't have an instance, there's no way for me to pass it in myself. 
So this really just doesn't make any sense. You, you don't call instance methods on the class. You create an instance of the, of the class and then call instance methods on that instance. All right, but this variable, the actual instance, is rather tedious. Uh, it's rather long. So in Python, we have a long-held convention, widely observed, to call this variable self. Every time you create an instance method, the first argument should always read self. You'll see that in just about every piece of Python code you read. It's not required. It's not a magic word. It's not a keyword. So in some languages you may have used, if you've used Java or JavaScript or C++, there's this magical term, this. And this magically points to the instance. Okay, In Python, we don't have that. We don't have a magic term. We just implicitly get that instance passed as the first argument. We can call it whatever we want, but everybody and their brother calls it self, and you should too. Because if you don't, it'll confuse people and they won't want to help you with your Python code. All right, so there we go. That is an instance method. Now, I don't want to have to call this extra method here to set up my coordinates after I create a point. It would be really nice if whenever I created a point that I just could pass in these numbers here, right? And they would automatically be set instead of calling an extra set coordinates method. Well, we can make that happen. And to do that, we have to define a special function or special method in our class that is underscore underscore init underscore underscore. So double underscores, init, double underscores. This is what we call the init method. If you've used other object-oriented languages, you can kind of think of this as the constructor. But it's not really a constructor. It doesn't need to return anything. And it doesn't actually construct the object. But it's basically a hook into the construction process where we can do all the kinds of things that we want to do whenever we create an object of class point. So in this case, we want to make sure that whenever we define a point, that it's always going to have x and y coordinates. And we can add in here some default values. We'll add our default x and our default y. Okay, and notice I'm not typing self dot because self doesn't exist at that point in time. Self doesn't exist until we enter this method body and it's been passed in as the first argument. Some people will get an error where they try to use self outside of an instance method. Like right here, you know. That doesn't work. If you try to run that, you'll see what do we got? Name self not defined. So this variable self only exists inside of instance methods. Always keep that in mind. Okay, I'm talking about instance methods, but are there other kinds of methods in classes? I mean, we do have class variables that are attached to a class, as well as instance variables that are attached to an instance. Do we have the same thing with methods? Yes, we do. We do have a thing called a class method. And to get one, we need to use a decorator. If you're not familiar with decorators, basically they're a way to wrap a function in another function. But effectively, what we use them for is to modify a function or a method um, with some bolt-on functionality. So in this case, what I do is I use the at sign to create a decorator, and I say class method. And that will basically mark whatever method I define right after that as a class method. So a class method does not get access to the instance. It has no way to access an object or instance of the class, but it does get passed in as its first argument, the class itself. 
Um, this is commonly used for a function that's going to actually return a new instance of the class. For example, if I wanted to be able to create a new point from a tuple, I'll create a from tuple method. The first argument will be a class, and by convention we abbreviate that CLS. We don't want to say class because that's a keyword. Okay, so CLS and then um, our arguments. In this case, it'll be a tuple coordinates. And then I can return, I can call that CLS. The CLS in this case will refer to point. Okay. And we'll do chord zero, chords one. Okay, and then I can call this. I don't have to call this from an instance. Since this is a class method, I can call it directly from the class. And we'll pass in a tuple of 235. Why not? Okay, and that will return a point. Okay, we can actually see, we'll make that P2. So P2.x, P2.y. All right, 235, there we go. Okay, there's one more kind of method that we can create. And it is a method that gets neither access to the instance nor the class. It is what we call a static method. Static methods are useful when you have utility functions that kind of belong with your class, but don't really work with any of the data in the class. So for example, we could create a distance method and we'll calculate the distance between two point objects. Of course, that is the Pythagorean theorem. So p1 dot x minus p2 dot x squared plus p1 dot y minus, oops, I better put this in parentheses, p1 dot y minus p2 dot y squared, raise that to 0.5, which is basically taking the square root. So this defines our distance method. That is a static method, so notice it doesn't get any access to the instance. There's no self here. It doesn't get any access to the class, so there's no CLS variable here. It's just a function that happens to be attached to the class point. If we wanted to call that we would say point dot distance and then we could pass in our point objects and it would calculate that distance for us. Okay, so this right here is most of what you need to know to write classes. However, there's a lot more to classes that is certainly useful. For example, let's talk about this method here, this init method. So it starts out with double underscores, and I mentioned that um, this is a special method. We actually call this a magic method, or dunder method. Dunder is a portmanteau of double underscore, and it is not the only one. There are several dunder methods, or so-called magic methods, that we can define in a class which will control its behavior. For example, if I just return p1, I get this output. main.point at some long memory location. That's not a real helpful way to visualize what this object is, is it, right? We would probably like to see the x and y coordinates. Well, to control how the point class appears when it's printed out, we can define the dunder str string method and that should receive one variable and that's a reference to self and it returns a string and whatever string we return we'll say just hello world for now if I can spell <clears throat> 
we'll put it in a, a format string. Now you can see that when we print our string, it appears as hello world. Okay, if I remove this, it'll be back to that ugly main dot point object. Okay, let's undo that. All right, that's not how we want our point to appear. So let's say we want it to appear like point, and then we'll say self dot x and self dot y. All right, so now our point object prints out in this format, point and then x and y. So that gives us powerful control over how our object appears whenever we use it in a string. And certainly it's helpful if we're printing something long like the point is a, right? Much easier to just put the object itself in our string rather than have to format it every time in the string, like you know, p1.x, comma, p1 dot y, that would be tiresome. If there's a, a standard, obvious way that that should be formatted, we can just define that in the str function. Dunder methods are also used for defining the behavior of operators. So I'll have to apologize to mathematicians out there because I don't really know what the proper handling of subtraction between points is, but let's just say for argument that we want our point class to calculate the distance between the points whenever the points are subtracted, okay? So to do that, we would define the sub Dunder method, and we would pass it an argument. The second argument is going to be the other thing that is being subtracted. So if we're saying p1 minus p2, P1 obviously would be our self, and P2 would be the other. And in this case, we're just going to return, uh, we can use our point method, point.distance, self, other. Okay, now you'll see P1 minus P2 gives us the distance between those points. And we could define any other operators we want to. Uh, we could define what multiplication looks like. We could define what division looks like, addition, uh, greater than, less than, all kinds of comparisons. Um, there's a whole long list of these Dunder methods that you can override and define the behavior. So other things that they would control would be uh, iteration, comparison, mathematical operators, um, appearance, formatting, there's all kinds of things. Very convenient and very powerful tools to make your class very intuitive to use. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is inheritance and subclassing. This is another powerful tool of classes. All right, let's say we want a class like our point class but that also can contain a value at that point. So maybe we're doing some kind of plot or a, you know, two-dimensional chart, and we want our points to be able to associate a numeric value. Well, we could just copy all this code and paste it, right? And just add the bits we need, but that's silly and wasteful. What Python gives us is a way to take a class duplicate it, and then just change the parts that we need changed. Okay, so to do that, we start again with the keyword class, give it a name, we'll call it a value point. Once again, I'm using CapWords case here, just by convention. But next, I'm, instead of the colon, I'm going to add parentheses. And in those parentheses, I'm going to put the class that I'm inheriting from and that is called the parent class. So this is the subclass or child class. This is the parent class. Now we add our colon, and now our class block begins. Now if I just put pass here, uh, our value point 
is identical to let's see p3 our value point is identical to a point object and if I print that you'll see it prints with our string representation that's uh, that's cool but we don't want just a duplicate of our point we want something more than that so to get that we can override methods or add new methods to this definition by specifying them here so for example I want to be able to pass in a default value I want some kind of value into this point so I'm going to override that dunder init function self x equals default x y equals default y and value equals none and in here we will say self dot x equals x self dot y equals y and self dot value equals value and that will assign these arguments to instance attributes okay so now I can create a value point let's say 555 five, five. and we've got a problem here okay default X is not defined so what I need to do here is say point dot default X point dot default y okay but this this works and of course I won't be able to see that value unless we override the str method self all right there we go okay this works but this is kinda ugly this is a lot of duplication okay I don't really need to duplicate all this stuff up here right do I I mean what if I just left this out if I just left this out remember I'm overriding this method so this method is gone it's not gonna get run only this method however Python gives me a way to access methods from the parent class. There's a function that's built in called super. And if I call super, I will get a reference to the parent class, in this case point. I can then call its init method and pass along some of those arguments. Okay? So in this case I can get rid of the defaults because that will be handled by the parent class if I don't pass in those defaults okay or I can you know still use that if I want to but now super is going to handle all the assigning of these other things and let's see if this works because we're going to reference these instance variables down here if this still runs yeah we know that super handled assigning X and Y to instance variables or instance attributes and we don't have to do that ourselves now Okay, so anytime we override a method in a subclass, we can get the functionality of the parent class by calling super and calling its version of the same method. All right, and as you'll see, I can still subtract, I think. Yes, I can still subtract these points because even though I haven't overridden that method, value point inherits from point it still has this subtraction behavior it still has this static distance method that that depends on so all the things that I didn't override are still here in this class that makes this a very powerful tool for creating lots of classes uh, that are variations on a theme alright so there are more things we could talk about with classes a lot more things things like properties and um, multiple inheritance and other topics those are a little more advanced I think that for the most part for probably 90 percent of the classes you'll ever need to make in Python this is all you really need to know
All right, there's, there's maybe a few more subtle things that come into play in certain situations, but for the most part, you'll go a long way just knowing these things. Now, a lot of people will say to me, okay, I get the syntax. I, I can sit here and follow you and write a class, but what I don't know how to do is I, I don't know when I should use a class. I don't know what situations call for a class. That's going to be the subject of our next video. In our next video, we're going to look at some signs that should raise a red flag in your mind and show you that you need to use a class. Until then, I hope you have enjoyed this. Uh, if you found this helpful, please do subscribe. Also, check out my books that are linked in the description. And have a lot of fun coding. God bless.